Well, I started tennis when I was six years old, and uh, I just uh, you know I used to do it like a hobby, and it became serious. It was something that my parents dreamed of uh, of making their child an athlete, and uh, you know, so I've been blessed to have achieved so much in my life. And I feel uh, you know I, I went to school in Hyderabad. I've been brought up in Hyderabad. I went to Nasa school, which were very supportive in my in my tennis career as well. It was more like a hobby. I used to swim. I used to play tennis, and I used to uh, I actually used to roller skate as well. And um, you know, I, I just happened to be a little bit more talented, I guess, in tennis than the other stuff. And uh, at that moment, you know, you had I had to make a choice, and I chose tennis, and it was the right choice. Yeah, I think that it does help uh, in coordination, fitness, and general health. You know, to make it make your cardiovascular better. And, um, most definitely, when you're that young, I think it's very good to play as many sports as possible, and then later on you can choose a profession. I was 15 actually, but um, no, it was great. It was something that you always dreamt of, of playing Wimbledon and winning at Wimbledon. So, uh, as a child, uh, that was very special. I mean, it was always a dream, I think, as, as a kid, you know, but when it really became serious was when I was about 12, 13, I think that was the time when I really, I think you can take certain decisions, you also are growing older, so you're too young at 6 or 7 or 8 to make a decision for yourself, but um, yeah, around 12 or 13. No, I think that uh, more than changing, it's about developing me as a, as a person and as a tennis player, you know. I think that I couldn't have done it without them. They've been extremely uh, supportive and extremely instrumental in, in whoever I, I am today and whatever I've achieved. And, um, you know, all credit to them for making so many sacrifices in their life. That's why ten tennis is so tough because it's played in more than 200 countries and yeah. I think that's what makes tennis so uh, competitive as well. But uh, more than that, I think it makes it hard because not only do you play, you know, there are certain sports you play only in Asia, only in the subcontinent. You know, we play all over one day, we are playing in, you know, 45 degrees heat and then all of a sudden the next week we have to go to minus 2, uh, which is in Paris from Australia. And I mean, the travel is like 24 hours. So, you know, it's, it's something like that. And that, that's why tennis is more tricky, I think, because you need to adjust to these things and you don't really have time. You play a final on Sunday. On Monday or Tuesday, you have to play. You know, I, I know people who don't get over jet lag for two, two weeks after they come back from America. So, um, you know, I think that it's become a habit really for us to, um, you know, just adjust to that. And we try and adjust your sleeping patterns and, you know, just stuff like that. I think a lot of, uh, you're absolutely right, I mean it could be whether 100 or 200, I think everyone knows how to play tennis and uh, you know even being 200 or 300 in the world in tennis is unbelievable because um, there's, like I said, there's more than 200 countries playing, you're still in the top 200 best at what you're doing, um, you know, in the whole world. So. Um, I think that everyone can strike the ball. It's about when the point starts and someone says love all and you know that's when you need to bring your best out and I think the top players do that better than the others where in tight situations when nerves take over uh, for instance or uh, not just I think uh, it, it doesn't, tennis is not only about playing um, or hitting the ball it's about uh, mentally fighting and uh, how you react to tough situations, how you react when you're losing, how you react when you're winning. I mean, you know, and I think the top players adjust to that better. Oh. It's been going really good. I think that, uh, you know, the interest uh, is, is overwhelming and people have really come out and there's been a lot of, uh, you know, the whole goal of this academy was to try and give back to the state and give back to the country. And, it's something that, um, you know, financially, which was a little bit of a burden for us because we, you know, it was something that we did by ourselves. It was, you know, we didn't have any government, uh, so to say, a financial help in this academy from the land to the building of courts to everything. So it's actually very satisfying when we sit here and you feel that you've done this and you're trying to give back and hopefully we'll have more tennis players coming out of this, this part of the world. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I believe in moderation, you know, I'm not one of those who really believes that you need to sacrifice completely, you know, I think that we play enough and we burn enough calories to be eating, but I'm not saying you need to eat cakes every day, but I mean, once in a while, I, I don't think you should deprive yourself. I leave, I mean, really as a tennis player, you set your goals week to week, um, you know, you want to try and win every tournament you play. Uh, so, I play for Washington a couple of days, hopefully, you know, we'll have a good start and a good warm-up before the US Open uh, for the next four or five weeks. And that's really it, you know, it's not about, um, we don't have that luxury, unfortunately, as other sports where we can plan for two years ahead or one year yeah. ahead and try and train for it, uh, you know, so we have to really take it uh, day by day. I think it's just the love for the game and the belief really, um, you know, more than anything you have to believe that you belong there and, um, you know, realistically if you've been there once, you know, most of the time you can be there again and you need to believe and as, as in a 10 year, 12 year long career, everyone goes through ups and downs, you, like you can't really be ups, there's always some down and I think that's when you have a good support system around you, good family, friends and, um, you know, a good strong base where uh, they help you get over. Well, in tennis, I think Roger Federer, Rafa Nadal, but um, outside tennis, I think Usain Bolt. I mean, I've had three surgeries in the last eight years, so that's something that it's it's the toughest part of the, of a sports person's career because that's something that we like to be in control and we have no control over that one thing and it feels extremely it's actually very painful because I mean mentally more than physically because physically you can recover it's more about the mental mental way that to recover and get back to your best so um, again you need a good system around you like I said a yeah. good space and uh, you know people who can keep you positive I mean, I think that one thing would I would do differently is uh, if I do get a chance, I would love to have an academy like this to start with because at a time when I was playing, uh, there wasn't even a hard court. We used to play on courts made out of cow dung. We didn't have clay courts or hard, hard courts. So to do that and to compete with the, the best in the world, I think that's, uh, that's why it makes it more special to come out of this part of the world. The most important thing is the kid should love playing, um, you know, whatever sport it is, you cannot force the child because if you force the child, he's, he or she is never going to uh, succeed at it. I think they need to love it, they need to enjoy it, they, they should say I want to go to play tennis or whatever sport they want to play.